Hey folks, welcome back to a cold winter day in the combo classroom where I'm warming up with a little bit of natural fire while I think about some numbers. And in this episode, when I refer to numbers, I'm going to mean a whole positive number that could be used to count something, like here are four leaves. And it's not going to matter how we write down that four. Four of a thing does have some traits that it fundamentally has in common with other types of number. One way we could see how the number four is composed is to analyze how many ways can I make it using addition and smaller whole numbers. Like I could make four out of one plus one plus one plus one, or one plus one plus two, or two plus two, or one plus three, or just four on its own. And those are known as the partitions of the number four. It has five partitions. And these partition numbers, how many ways we could additively make numbers, numbers are a really deep and interesting mathematical concept, but they're not the main focus today. Although I did find a cool connection between them and some of the other topics we'll encounter, so I had to give them a little introduction because they'll come back later in the episode. But the main way we're going to be analyzing numbers structures today is how they can be made with multiplication, because every integer like this has a unique prime factorization. In the case of four, two squared, or two times another two. And it also has a unique list of total divisors that could divide it without a remainder. In the case of four, one, two, and four. And those are also known as the factors of the number. But to be clearer between prime factorization and the total list, I'll call them divisors today. So for four, we had a total of two prime factors. If you count the two twice, because there's two of them, and three divisors. But it's not true that every number with two prime factors has three divisors. Now, in the case of a prime number like five, we do get more of a one-to-one -one correlation between how many prime factors and how many divisors we can expect. Any number with one prime factor has two divisors, and any number with two divisors has one prime factor. Those are exactly the prime numbers. But when we look at composite numbers, which have more than one prime factor and more than two divisors, they come in interesting families. Like six here, which happens to have 11 partitions, if we use addition, multiplicatively has its unique prime factorization being two times three, and it's divisor list being one, two, three in itself. So it has two prime factors and four divisors. This number four also had two prime factors, but had three divisors. It turns out that any number with three divisors will have two prime factors, but not every number with four divisors has two prime factors. And these families become a little more confusing and intertwined when we look at bigger numbers. With a bigger number, like 24, we get a massive number of partitions if we use addition. 24 has more than a thousand ways to do that one plus one plus one or et cetera game of making it, but it still has a unique singular prime factorization. In the case of 24, it's two cubed times three to the first power, and it ends up having eight divisors in total. So with 24, we we get four prime factors and eight divisors, and that's sort of in the middle of two different potential families. Because if we looked at all the numbers that have four prime factors exactly, it turns out not all of them have eight divisors, but all of them have either five, eight, nine, 12, or 16 divisors. And if we went the other way around and looked at all the numbers with eight divisors, not all of them have four prime factors, but all of them have either three, four, or seven prime factors. Now, the way I calculated these is using an underrated concept about numbers called their prime signature. A number's prime signature is where you take its prime factorization and only catalog in a list 
the exponent numbers. It doesn't matter what numbers are multiplying in the prime factorization. What matters is their multiplicity or how many of them occur a single time versus more than once. Like 24 had something cubed and something else to the first power in its prime factorization, making its prime signature be this list of three comma one, the exponent numbers. And typically it's written just in a downward fashion where it doesn't matter which order of size hit the larger exponent, something like two to the first power times three to the third power also has a prime signature of just three, one, because those are the exponents in order of largest to smallest. So does a number like 875, which is five to the third power times seven to the first power. And we can see that a prime signature doesn't relate to which numbers something is divisible by, like this one is super even and a little threeven, this one is super threeven and a little even, and this one's neither. But the prime signature can tell us a lot. Let me show you on the other whiteboard. No, 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 the uh, other, other whiteboard. Uh. Here's a list of the smallest prime signatures we would encounter sorted by the first number with that signature. And if we see a prime signature with nothing within these brackets, that refers to just the number one, which has a single divisor, but no prime factors, and does have a nickname. It's often called the unit. And if we see a prime signature with the number one alone inside it, that means it's referring to a prime number because the prime factorization had a single prime to the first power. And those will always have two divisors and the nickname prime number. And then we encounter other prime signatures, such as if we wondered which numbers can have two prime factors and what traits do those have, that refers to the prime signatures that the numbers add up to two, these two examples. And we see that one of those is two alone inside the prime signature, referring to a number like four, known as squares of primes, a subset of square numbers. And the other option is that the prime factors were different, that we have one comma one, with the smallest example being six we saw, and those are nicknamed square-free semi-primes, with square-free meaning no square number can divide it, or in other words, that its prime signature has nothing larger than a one in it, and semi-primes being a mathematical nickname for numbers with just a total of two primes making them up. So one of these two cases. Now numbers with just a two inside their prime signature, I called squares of primes and not square numbers in general, because we see that a square number like 36 might have a different prime signature, in that case two comma two, because it's made up of two squared times three squared, although it is a square number of its own. And it turns out that square numbers are exactly the numbers whose prime signatures, whether it's a single term or multiple terms, have all of the numbers inside them even. So a prime signature like two comma four or two comma two comma eight would be a square number also because it's a square number if and only if all the numbers in the prime signature are even. Also we can note that those are the times where the number of divisors is odd. Square numbers are also exactly the numbers with an odd number of divisors. And when we see the formula in a minute for how to turn prime signatures into divisor numbers, see if you can ponder yourself how that leads to the fact that square numbers ended up with an odd number there. And it's not just square numbers that have cool patterns we could note. Cubes are the numbers where every number in their prime signature, regardless if it's a single number or multiple, is threeven or a multiple of three. So a prime signature like three comma three comma nine or three comma six 
would be a cube number. And in general, numbers known as perfect powers can be described as the numbers whose prime signature contains all numbers, whether it's a single number or multiple, that have a greatest common denominator larger than one. After these first few, not as many prime signatures get a common mathematical nickname, although there are ways to use it to describe a number, like 2 comma 1 means a number that's made up of a prime squared times another prime. But we even do get a nickname for the 1 comma 1 comma 1 numbers, like 30, that are made up of three individual primes to the first power multiplied together. Those are nicknamed Sphenic numbers, historically. And I do like that they got a nickname, because it's in a family of prime signatures that are the prime signatures only containing the number one some amount of times. Those are the numbers that are square-free, meaning no square number can divide them. And they remind me of the numbers I like to call hyper-elevens, numbers composed of just the digit one some amount of times. These are remind me of the hyper 11s of the prime signatures. And we'll see in a minute that there's a reason why the hyper 11-like prime signatures, the square free ones, always have a number of divisors that's a power of two. All right, you ready to see the magic formula for turning prime signatures into how many divisors that type of number must have? Here's all you have to do. You take whatever numbers are inside the prime signature, add one to each one. So like one turned to two, two turned to three, one and one turned to two each, and you multiply the list together. So I added one to each of these, they became twos, I multiply them together and get four. In these cases, I added one, just had a single number, there we go. Here it'll have four by adding one. Here we'll have two plus one is three, one plus one is two, and we multiply those to get six. Here, how about the sphenic numbers? We get one plus one is two, three times multiplied together, and two times two times two gives us eight. Now, as for why the Hyper 11-esque prime signatures always lead to a power of two number of divisors, we can imagine it one way by if you had a list of ones and added one to each one, you get a list of twos, and those will, of course, multiply to a power of two. But I also found a cool way of visualizing it in terms of another field of math called combinatorics. And we haven't covered this much, but if you have a set of items, let's say one called A, one called B, and one called C, three items in that case, and you have to pick from them. You could pick none of them, pick one of them, pick two of them, or pick all of them, and the order doesn't matter. We'll always end up with a power of two number of ways of picking from n items. It'll be two to the nth power number of ways. Like with three items, you could do none, you could pick A, you could pick B, you could pick C, you could pick A and B, you could pick A and C, you could pick B and C, or you could pick all three. And including picking none as an option, those are two to the third power total ways you could pick from three things. And let's turn this into the factors of a sphenic number. That had three prime factors making it up, which we can call A, B, and C. When we have none of those multiplying together, we're left with one multiplicatively. We could also have any of those individually as a factor of a sphenic number. These are the three primes that make it up. We also will have a factor of 
A times B, A times C, B times C, and then the number itself is A times B times C. So these are the eight factors of a sphenic number. So it's kind of cool, I realized, that if you list all the factors of one of these Hyper 11-esque ones, it's basically the same as how many ways can you pick from n items, leading to a total amount of two to the nth power options or divisors. So if you have a given prime signature, it's really easy to calculate the exact number of divisors that that prime signature must have. But how does this all relate to these earlier stats I got? Like how anything with four prime factors has one of these amounts of divisors, or anything with eight divisors has one of these amounts of prime factors. Well, for this case, when we're looking at which numbers can have four prime factors, we're looking at when can a prime signature contain numbers that add up to four. And that's looking at the partitions of four. We can have the prime signature one comma one comma one comma one, one comma one comma two, two comma two, one comma three, or four on its own. And those are the prime signatures that line up with having four prime factors in total. Then when we play that formula game with it, where we add one to each of these and multiply them instead of adding, the numbers we get as options are these ones, five, eight, nine, 12, and 16. And what about the other way around? If we wondered which types of number can have eight divisors, well, then we can backtrack and think, what sets of number, if we had added one to each of them, could have multiplied to eight? Well, the things that could multiply to eight as a set of number would be eight itself, which before we added one to that would be seven prime factors, or a prime signature of just seven on its own. We could have two times four making eight, which before we added one to each one gives a prime signature of three comma one, adding up to four prime factors, or we could have two times two times two building up to eight, which before we added one to them is a prime signature of one comma one comma one, adding up to three prime factors. Now to show another example of how this works, if I knew a number had five prime factors and wondered some traits it might have, I could look at all of the partitions of five. Then I turn these partitions into prime signatures just by separating them by commas, and I know a lot about the number. Like if I wanted to know how many divisors it had, I add one to each of those within the prime signature, multiply it together, and get these results, showing me that any number with five prime factors either has six, 10, 12, 16, 18, 24, or 32 divisors exactly. And if I wanted to ask the other question, knowing that I have a certain amount of divisors for a number and wondering what prime factors it might have, well, if I have 12 divisors of a number, for example, I wonder which numbers can have a dozen divisors. I can see which numbers up through 12 can multiply in a list to get it giving me either 12, six times two, four times three, or three times two times two. Then I can subtract one from each of those and separate them by commas to know those prime signatures, showing me that any number with 12 divisors has either 11 prime factors, those ones would add to six prime factors, those would add to five prime factors, or that case adds to four prime factors. All right, as we can see, even if you don't know which primes multiply into a number, knowing the multiplicity of them in this thing called the prime signature tells you a lot. 
And so, all right, I guess it's time to clean up all my, gather, gather all my whiteboards. Here you go, these whiteboards? Oh, no, no, not, not, not the whiteboards. No, 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 no. Ah. Thanks for, ah. Thanks for coming to combo class.